Good evening. Welcome to the April 18th, 2022 Planning Commission meeting. I will now call the meeting to order. Uh, Nick, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Sure. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. By motion of the Planning Commission, this is the time to notify the public of any changes to the agenda, rearrange the order of the agenda, and provide an opportunity for any member of the Planning Commission or staff to request an item to be removed. Excuse me, Chair, can we take, take a roll call we vote, take please? We need to take roll. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Chair Miller? Present. Vice Chair Thomas? Here. Commissioner Massetti? I'm here. Commissioner Klinger? Here. Commissioner Campbell? Here. All present? Thank you. Approval of the agenda by motion of the Planning Commission. This is the time to notify the public of any changes to the agenda, rearrange the order of the agenda, and provide an opportunity for any member of the Planning Commission or staff to request an item to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Do we have a motion and a second? I move that we approve. I'll second it. We have a roll call, was please. That, who was the second? I'm sorry. Oh, Massetti. Thank you. Okay, uh, Chair Miller, how do you vote? Yes. Vice Chair Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Massetti, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Klinger, how do you vote? Yes. And Commissioner Campbell, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, that passes 5-0. Uh, oral communications at this time, members of the public may address the Planning Commission regarding any items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Commission. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the Commission cannot discuss or take action on any items not on the agenda unless authorized by law. Those members of the public wishing to speak are asked to come forward to the microphone, state their name for the record. All speakers will be limited to a period of five minutes. Uh, do we have any emailed, or do we have any comments, emailed comments? We received no email comments this evening, thank you. Thank you. Uh, consent calendar approval of the March 21st, 2022 Planning Commission minutes. Do we have a motion and a second? So moved. I'll second. Were you wanting to speak during the? Oh, I'm here for Nancy Smith. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe we should open it to like the audience since we have an audience. Yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> I, think, I think we're okay. Okay, so we have no oral communications this evening for the record? Correct. Thank you. And we had a motion and a second for the minutes. consent calendar? What was this for? The minutes. This is the minutes I, I of the March 21st so meeting? Yep. Yep. So, Patty. Yes, yes. I said so moved. And then yes. somebody else said. And it. Commissioner Klinger second. Okay, roll call vote. Um, Chair Miller, how do you vote? Yes. Vice Chair Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Massetti, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Cleaner, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Campbell, how do you vote? Yes. Passes 5-0, thank you. Thank you. Uh, on to the public hearing, item B, minor use permit MUP 22-1, and I live within 500 feet of the applicant, so I will step outside. Oh, so this is uh, Vice Chair Thomas taking uh, over the meeting. We'll wait for uh, the chair to leave the room. Great work, Steve. <laughs> um, okay, so this is item number, wait, I wanna get this right. Uh, so this is item B, a minor use permit for 127 13th Street, applicant Nancy Smith. Uh, Director Smittle, do we have a staff report? We do have a staff report. Uh, Assistant Planner Marco Cuevas will be presenting it this evening. Thank you, Alexa. Uh, good evening, uh, Vice Chair and Planning Commissioners. Uh, tonight's proposal is from Nancy Smith, uh, who filed an application for a minor use permit 22-1 for the property located at 127 13th Street. Uh, the request is to allow an interior remodel, the addition of uh, 60 square feet of a covered entryway and the addition of a new front and side porches totaling 483 square feet of non-habitable space 
and the addition of an attached 437 square foot rear patio cover to an existing single family residence that is non-conforming due to side and rear setbacks in the RHD 20 zone. Uh, the image in front of you is the site plan or site location, and so you can see how it's situated on 13th Street with the arrow pointing there. And the subject site is a 5,877 square foot parcel located on the west side of 13th Street between Ocean and Electric Avenue in the Old Town area. And the lot is currently developed with a one-story single-family residence and a detached two-car garage. Uh, the subject site is surrounded by residential um, uses on all sides. So this is a site plan of the property. And um, the subject uh, property is uh, non-conforming due to um, required side and rear yard setbacks. Um, according to the Seal Beach Municipal Code, interior lot properties in the RHD 20 zone are required to maintain a side yard setback that is 10% of the property width or a minimum of three feet and a rear, side, and a rear yard setback that is 24 feet minus the alley width. Um, the subject property measures 50 feet in width and 117 and a half feet in depth. Uh, based on these dimensions, uh, the development standard requires a side yard setback of five feet and a rear yard setback of um, nine feet. Uh, the red lines on the image above represent uh, the areas that are deficient with regard to setback. The south yard setback on the existing residence is three feet, 10 inches and is deficient by one feet, two inches of the five feet. The detached garage has a south yard setback that is built along the property line, and so that's deficient by five feet. And the rear setback is uh, three feet, which is deficient by six feet of, um, of that alleyway that's needed. So all other setbacks are conforming. Um, the image in front of you now is a floor plan. So the uh, applicant is proposing to provide additional coverage by expanding the existing front covered porch uh, with an addition of a 60 square foot covered entryway, which is outlined in yellow, and the addition of a new front and side porches totaling uh, 483 square feet of non-habitable space, which is outlined in green. And, and the applicant is also proposing to construct the attached patio cover located towards the back of the home, measuring 437 square feet, which is outlined in blue. Uh, when completed, the front and side porch additions and rear patio will be compliant with required setbacks established for the RHD 20 zone. Uh, the, the applicant also proposes to alter the interior by converting the existing family room into a bedroom with bathroom. So these are the elevations, the front and rear elevation of the properties. So um, the elevation views represent the areas to be added as shaded areas. So the areas that you see from the front um, if you look to the image to the right, the shaded area to the right represents the area that would be added. And then if you look at it from the rear property, the rear side of the property, the shaded image to the left is what would be added that, uh, to the property, and that would be the, the rear patio. Um, although the proposed addition will increase the lot coverage on the property, um, it'll increase it to 48%, which is still well under the 75% uh, lot coverage allowed in the RHD 20 zone. Uh, similar to the previous um, slide, um, these elevations are the south elevation on the top and the lower image is the north elevation. So once again, the shaded areas represent the areas that would be added. And under our analysis, um, the Sill Beach Municipal Code allows for minor improvements which, improve, which involve the alteration or addition of roofs, exterior doors, balconies, and porches to nonconforming properties. Um, the same code section also allows for interior wall modifications, which involves the removal or alteration to less than 25% of the structure's interior walls, provided the bedroom and bathroom ratio does not exceed one and a half bathrooms for each bedroom. No new habitable space is, is proposed beyond the exterior alterations requested as a part of this minor use permit. Uh, the alterations proposed on the subject site are consistent with the provisions of this code and will not intensify any of the non-conforming setbacks. So our recommended action is um, staff recommends a planning commission adopt resolution 22-4, approving minor use uh, permit 22-1. And that concludes my presentation. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Marco. Uh, appreciate that. Okay, so first I'll turn to commissioners. Do any of you commissioners have any questions for planning staff? No. No? No? Okay, very good. Then I will open this item for public comment. Um, I don't have a hammer. 
Okay, we are now open for public comment. Uh, would anyone care to comment on this, the applicant or applicant's representative? You are not required to, it's up to you. I just want to say Nancy. Oh, well, if you're going to say something, you have to step up. <laughs> okay. 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 And if you don't mind stating your name for the record. I'm sorry, my name is Joan Owen. Well, and I'm working with Nancy Smith on a remodel. Oh, okay, uh, Nancy, that's Joan Owen for the record. Yes. Okay, thank All you. Right. Okay, very good. Uh, Hi, Joan. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Nancy's out of town, so that's why I'm here for her. I've just been working on her on the, with her on the space plan, and uh, and I now I've met Marco. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, Nancy's really excited to get going on this, so she will be thrilled, um, and we can get it back to the architect and uh, have more detailed plans for for the review and the planning department. Okay, very good. Do, do any commissioners have any questions for? Ms. Owens? Okay. Okay. No. Well, um, if that's all, then that was. That you did was, very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Nancy will be thrilled. I'll give her a call. She well, well, we haven't voted yet. So. <laughs> oh, you haven't voted? Oh, God. We haven't voted oh, yet. No. We'll, get, we'll get there. We'll, okay. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> is there anyone else who would like to comment on this item from the public? The only thing I commented is that I think it's a lovely remodel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm going. I'm going to close the public public uh, speaking part of this. You can get his thing over there. Oh, gavel. it's way over there. I didn't even see it. Okay. Um, okay. So, does it, do any commissioners uh, uh, have any comments or anything they wish to add? Do we have a motion? So moved for approval. All right. Very good. Moved by Commissioner Campbell. Commissioner Thomas, I'll second this. Uh, Commissioner Thomas, I second the motion. So, can we uh, call the vote? Yes, uh, Vice Chair Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Massetti, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Klinger, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Campbell, how do you vote? Yes. Passes 4-0 and noting for the record that Chair Miller recused himself for this item. Thank you, Dana. Um, Assistant City Attorney Grayson, do you have something to add? Yes, there's a 10-day appeal period of this decision. It starts running tomorrow. Thank you, Amy. Uh, okay, so that ends this item. Um, let's, uh, let's invite back our honorable chair, Steve Miller. And uh, I, uh, I, what's the word I wanna use? Secede my, uh, my leadership role. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. On to item C, conditional use permit 22-2 at 231 14th Street. Is there a report? Yes, Chair, there is a report. Again, uh, Assistant Planner Cuevas will be assisting. Yes, here we are again. Um, Chair Miller and Plan Commissioners, tonight's second item is one you've heard before. Uh, this proposal is from Yolanda Davis, who filed an application for a condition to use permit 22-2 on the property located at 231 14th Street. Uh, the request is to allow an interior remodel and the expansion of the living room and, and a new front porch to an existing single family residence that is non-conforming due to setbacks. The subject site is located on near the southwesterly corner of 14th Street and Landing in the Old Town area and is developed with a single story, single family residence and an attached two car garage. Um, this is a site location image so you can, um, you can get an idea of where it's located there on uh, close to the corner of Landing and 14th Street. So uh, the property is non-conforming due to its setbacks along the north and south interior sides of the property. Uh, according to Seal Beach Municipal Code, interior side setbacks for lots in the RHD 20 zone um, are required to be at least 10% of the lot width. Uh, the subject property is an interior lot and measures 37 and a half feet wide by 100 feet deep. And based on, the, on these dimensions, the uh, standard requires interior side yard setbacks of three feet nine inches. The existing northerly side yard setback is three feet one inch for approximately 34 feet. And the southerly side yard setback is three feet nine inches. Um, all other setbacks and zoning requirements are code compliant with this property. So we, here we have the uh, site plan. And um, since the applicant is proposing to expand the residence by adding 157 square feet to the existing living room area and by adding a new 101 square foot front porch, 
Uh, the interior remodel proposes an expanded open layout design for the kitchen, dining room, and living room areas. Uh, the, fr the front porch proposes to extend five feet into a portion of the front yard, leaving a seven foot setback, which is in excess of the six foot minimum and within the 12 foot average. Uh, the proposed addition will result in a slight increase in lot coverage due to the living room expansion and front addition. Uh, the total lot coverage is calculated at 58%, which is still less than the maximum permitted 71.6% lot coverage. So the area that's shaded in green represents the area that would be added. Um, at the, at the area that's closest to 14th Street would be the um, front porch, and the area in green right behind it would be the expansion to the uh, living room area. Um, this is a floor plan of the proposed property or of, uh, the improvement to the property. The image to the left is the demolition plan for the property and the green line represents um, the outside wall that would be demolished. Uh, the image to the right is a proposed plan which shows the area to be expanded as represented by the green shaded area. Uh, the, area to, um, the area to be added will only take place along a portion of the southern portion of the residence and will maintain the required three foot, nine inch side setback as required by the code. Um, these are the elevation views of the property. So the elevation views above show the areas to be expanded in red and the total lot coverage is calculated as I previously mentioned at 58%, which is less than the 71.6% um, required by the code. Um, so if you can see on the top middle image, um, the area that's kind of highlighted with the um, the red dashed lines would be the area that um, that would be added as, far as a part of the front porch addition. And the image right below that, the south elevation, also using the same format with the red dashed line represents the area that would be expanded. So as part of our analysis, the Seal Beach Municipal Code allows improvements which involve the alteration or addition to residences that are non-conforming due to setbacks subject to approval of a condition use permit. All proposed improvements to the subject property conform to all the other requirements of the Seal Beach Municipal Code. Um, this conditional use permit is required due to the parcel having um, a structure that does not meet uh, setback requirements. Uh, the proposed addition would be consistent with other residential properties and would not intensify any of the existing nonconformities on the property because the proposed addition would meet setback requirements for the RHD 20 zone and would maintain all required setbacks. Um, the alterations proposed are consistent with the provisions of this um, Seal Beach Municipal Code. So as part of a recommended action, the staff recommends the Planning Commission adopt Resolution 22-5, approving Conditional Use Permit 22-2. Uh, that concludes my presentation, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any Commissioner comments? So I will now open the public hearing. Applicant is not here. Or is she on Zoom? No. No? Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion and a second? I move we approve. Second. Can we have a vote by roll call, please? Uh, Chair Miller? Yes. Vice Chair Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Massetti? Yes. Commissioner Klinger? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Vote passes 5 0. Thank you. Senior Assistant City Attorney Grayson? Yes, there's a 10 day appeal period from this decision, which starts running tomorrow. Thank you. Do we have any commission concerns? I have a question on uh, we, we did item C because it wasn't in the paper. And then we also had another one that, that was that same day. Is that, that one's coming up May 2nd? That's correct, yes. What was the reason for delay in that one? Our senior Excuse. planner who processed that application is on vacation. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be here in that the next meeting. Uh, I actually have a question, if I may. Yeah, of course, Chair. SB nine. Have we has that anything related to SB nine come before us here, or how's the city dealing with that? Can you help us with that, uh, Director Smittle? Yes, n nothing has come before you yet. Um, we have quite a number of, of things that we're juggling in the planning department and we're honestly just taking things one thing at a time. Um, we will be moving forward with some type of action for SB9. At the moment, the housing element remains our priority. 
So it's just a matter of priorities. We will get to that. Is what we will get me. to that. Okay. Yes, and 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 we did actually receive um, comments back from HCD on the ADU ordinance as well. So that that will be coming back as well. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. All right. I'm okay with that. I'm patient. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Campbell. Yeah, I have some comments. Uh, I spoke with Dana today and asked her if they could provide a copy of the Main Street specific plan to all of you commissioners. That was approved in 95-96, and it was done to protect Main Street, and it outlined what could and could not go there. And I think it would be wise for all of you to read it. It reads very well. Uh, stuff that we see today that comes back, all this legalese, Main Street's specific plan is very straightforward. But it outlines what can and cannot go there, and I think we all need to read that, okay? And um, if anybody has any questions, I can, uh, I marked off those things that were, you know, that um, tell you what can go, what can and cannot go there. So uh, it's just, uh, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to visit this again, and I would really think it would be wise if we all read it, okay? Just as a comment, um, that issue relates to an upcoming public hearing, so I would, and this is not on tonight's agenda, so I would strongly discourage you from having any discussion at all about this issue. Okay, thank you. Any other commission concerns? I'm fine, thank you. Marianne? No. Is there you. a director's report? There is not this evening other than to say welcome back to in-person meetings. That's it then. I will adjourn the Planning Commission meeting to Monday, May 2nd, 2022 at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone.